Hello, 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 hello. Okay, I'm back. This video is how to get everything you need. The easiest way. But before that, I have an announcement. Tyson versus Jones, 9 p.m. November 28th, paid per view. Okay, before we could go to the casino if we didn't have the money or else we just have to pay. So in this case, as cheap as I am, I will be watching Mike Tyson versus Jones. I think it's going to be a really good fight. Both of them want to win really bad, and that usually makes for a really good fight. So how to get everything you need. There's like one really, really easy way to get everything you need. Reduce the amount of stuff you need. So one of the reasons rich people prosper is they get to the point where they have everything they need. They have a house, they have a car, they have all the money they could need, they have clothes, but you don't have to be rich to get everything you need. What you have to do is reduce everything you need. Okay, I, I'm going to tell you guys some cheap thing I do. Okay, this time when I moved, I damaged a lot of stuff and... I lost control of the move and what happened was I've always had a lot of stuff but I've never had food storage like I did and so I had the feeling I couldn't do it but I didn't have any skills really how to do this but we I actually had movers I could have had them move the food but I was delusional and I thought I could do it and and it didn't go well just to tell you, it went really, really bad. My nose is running. Okay, so one of the things I did as soon as I got here is I started throwing these big loads of clothes in the washer. And I noticed in a couple of my videos, I had like these big red spots on my clothes. And I thought, what is this? And I wrecked my Marilyn Monroe shirt. And so what I did is I didn't want to throw my Marilyn Monroe shirt out. So I just put my other shirt over the top of it for now. So my, um, I had this London Fog red coat. And so it's a good coat. I thought it would be, I washed and cool. I thought it would be uh, color safe and it wasn't. It, it stained up all my clothes. So if you see big red spots all over, I don't know if this has it. That's what happened. That's what you get for being cheap. So, okay, so how to get everything you need. Go down and get the basic stuff you need, which would be food, water, and a clean, dry place to sleep. Warm, dry place to sleep. So, um, you to reduce your housing cost you could rent a room but out here people charge almost as much to rent a room as for a really really cheap apartment so um, and another thing if you can get a travel trailer a small one and pull it out to the back country that is actually cheaper than renting a room you can't co go back and forth as easily but, you know, a, a small trailer or motorhome could actually be cheaper than renting a room. But if you're renting a room, you're like in a house, it's really better than living in a trailer. But they want at least $600 a month, and usually the houses aren't that nice. And then now people are hesitant to do that because the renters don't pay their rent. And you're not supposed to throw them out. So you could have a home, you could get the cheapest home possible, you could move to a cheaper state. Um, I would say if you're in a home, just start trying to reduce all the expenses. Um, apartments, okay, I moved because I didn't like the fact that I was near the protests. And so what I did is I tried to move to a better area as far away from the trolley as I possibly could and not easily accessed by a freeway. So that's one reason I moved. So, you know, there's garages. Uh, some of them can be pretty comfortable uh, if it's a decent garage. 
Uh, the, the place my um, son bought actually had five bedrooms and he had several of them rented out. But what happened is the renters didn't pay up their rent. And then, you know, people are living in cars, but I think that's dangerous because of the grand solar minimum. Okay, there's other options like home health care, and, and they need men too. You know, sometimes men would rather have men. Uh, and my, my clientele in the days of beauty, uh, I had several men that did home health care for wealthy men, and they were well paid, and they lived the la lap of luxury. Also live in um, child care. Especially if you're the type that can do the homeschooling stuff. And then there's nursing homes. Um, out here, if, if like I had been a nursing student and it would have been very easily for me to be hired, but you don't necessarily have to have a license. If they like you, they'll train you. You can ask them. And there's all kinds of uh, jobs to do with uh, nursing homes, like uh, cooks, like uh, maintenance, like, um, you know, cleaning hospitals too. I'd say hospitals and nursing homes would be a good source of jobs. And a, a lot of other thing is a lot of them will let you eat there. When I was a nursing student, I was taking this class in Del Mar and we could buy lunch for $3, and the lunch was really, really delicious. So, you know, I always bought the lunch. So, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, renting a room, garage, car, home, apartment, and also, like, consider maybe better than the streets living in Mexico, like Tecate. Uh, a lot of these um, Indian casinos, you can park motor homes in their parking lots. And Walmart. Also, though, I heard in La Mesa, you can park off the street, you know, probably if you're not a menace. So, okay, so once you, you've got to have shelter, get that firmly in your mind, and it's got to be sure warm. So, when, when, once you get the, once you have shelter, basically, you do have everything you need. Because usually most places have water, I hope and you can get food free. So basically, when you're getting your everything you need, you're getting shelter. Then we're gonna go into uh, the food. Okay, so now, if you don't have any food, if you don't have very much food, you've gotta go to uh, the welfare department first and try to get welfare and EBT. And you can be a single man. And another thing is try to get Section 8. Once you get Section 8, I think you can take it pretty much to any state. And don't say you can't get it because you probably can. Now, the problem in California is finding somewhere to rent your Section 8. We have a long waiting list, but there's other places in the country where you can get your Section 8. So don't give up on that either. Also, um... As far as rooms and stuff, if you call the churches, they might have somebody in the congregation who really needs a roommate or a caregiver for their older uh, relative. Okay, so now about food, you're going to call 211 and you're going to find out where to go get the food. And this is how you're going to get a stockpile too. You're going to uh, go to the food banks, the food pantries. And, and you're going to get food. Now, if you're homeless, you're going to go to the shelters. You're going to find the, the parks that give you a lunch. You're going to find the churches that give you a dinner. And even if you're not homeless, uh, like the Adventists, they have dinner every Saturday after church. And the Baptists one night a week had, had a meal. And they also have uh, food. So you're gonna figure out how to get food. So you have shelter, that's what you really need, and then you can get food. So the most thing you wanna make sure you don't do is waste your food, and so what you wanna do is refrigerate it right away and then put it in the uh, freezer. One of the followers said once they started doing that, they never ran out of food again. So uh, now, 
I changed my thing up a little and I even learned something today. So um, I am convinced when you're trying to help other pe people, ultimately you end up helping yourself. And I ran into this guy living on the street and he had a can of this uh, solid yellow fit tuna. Now I've been buying the cheap stuff from Walmart, which is a good strategy. But if you have to survive and you have at least one good portion of protein, say this, you're going to fare a lot better. And he had potato chips and some liquor and some top ramen. But because he had this good protein, um, he was in pretty good shape. So what I've been doing, and I, I am kind of liking this, is I am kind of doing the individual meal. Okay, so for lunch, I like a sandwich with a small fruit or a small salad. But this one lady I, I was watching, and I told you guys to subscribe to her. What is Prepper Princess Extreme Low I Income Living in Detail. Go to this. This is really, really going to help you. And sh Prepper Princess. Almost everybody, you know, who's on YouTube knows about her. But what she was saying is have a sandwich and chips, just like the guy with his tuna and chips. And so I found some really good chips today. I have one bag left. Grocery outlet. This is a $5 bag of chips. These are really good. I can't imagine paying $5, but I pay 50 cents with my tuna. I could get by on that. So, okay, so for lunch, I would go for a sandwich. What would be good is some powdered milk or, you know, a soda or something like that. Also, I discovered at the one Walmart by my house now, they have foot-long subs for $5 and like 60 cents. So it'd be like, um, say $2 and 80 cents for half a sub. So that would be pretty good, and it's got lettuce and tomato, I think, on it. So if you go to a good sub, sub shop, a sub is like $10 now. Although they do have coupons and stuff for good subs. So for lunch, it would be a sandwich, and then if you had a top ramen, that'd be good. And um, so if you bought, like, things for seven sandwiches, I had a really good sandwich today. It was a BLT sandwich. But um, you'll get better at coming up with the sandwiches. So, and when you go to the food pantries all the time, you're going to start accumulating food little by little by little. Or just buy one or two extra cans. I'm not saying everyone be a moocher, run and take advantage of the food pantries and don't leave any for people in, in lack. But if you're sitting in your house basically with no food, you are lacking okay so now so say lunch was a sandwich and a fruit um i've been buying um i've been buying uh yogurt and that is at walmart have you guys seen these so i bought on uh, one of my days banana and this strawberry yogurt, you could make a smoothie, but you just could. This is like two fruits. So this would be like a sandwich and a fruit two days. So that's a good way to approach it too. So lunch would be a sandwich or soup. Um, where was that? I saw they had the good soup. Oh, it was Dollar Tree. They had the vegetable beef soup for a dollar. But today I was busy, so I might get some tomorrow. We'll see. So if you get vegetable beef soup, then you have your um, meat and your vegetable. Okay, so then, so you get seven lunches, like don't make a big deal, just get seven lunches, whatever you like to eat for lunch. I've always gotten by on two meals a day, just fine. Right now I'm getting fat, I'm eating a lot. But, um, I'm fat. What can I say? <laughs> I don't mind if if it wasn't 
It wasn't so unattractive. I wouldn't mind being fat. Okay, now you're going to get seven dinners. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion, get seven one quarter pound pieces of meat. Okay, you guys been watching me. You saw me. I got, where is that? Mark down, this was three pounds of hamburger for uh, $6, and I cut it in quarter pound pieces. $6 now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twelve dollars fifty cents each. Get a meat for lunch. I had bacon. So one quarter pound meat and three vegetables of your choice. The best thing to do is go for sweet potatoes, uh, rice, or uh, potatoes. Those are real food. They're not phony food. And then two other vegetables. One of the things I want to go to Aldi's and get is um, cauliflower and broccoli. So that's two vegetables. Or if you have a salad, today I had cucumbers. Cucumbers are a pain in my neck to get out here. I finally found cucumbers at um, Sprouts, good ones. They taste awful if they're not good cucumbers. So anyway, lettuce, tomato, carrots, cucumbers, you know, two or three vegetables, bread and butter, and say one or two fruits a day. So that is so easy. A sandwich for lunch, a meat with three vegetables for dinner, and I have bought very little food doing this. So that's one, and then on the food you're gonna be getting from this food bank, they give you uh, meat a lot, and you're gonna cut it in your quarter pound pieces, and you know, and you're going to try to pursue free meals. Uh, actually, they're pretty easy to get. I was doing Bible studies, and my friend goes, you're just going for the meals. I wasn't. I was going for the Bible studies, and it just so happened they gave you meals. So and I, I had like a free meal almost like every night of the, the week. I wasn't doing it on purpose. Okay, so now clothes. Okay. Out here, there's churches that give you like five free clothes per month. So when you're getting these free clothes, carefully select the best clothes available. And then take care of them if you can, or wear them to shreds, they're free. But if you take care of them, you're going to be able to sell them. And also out here, we have thrift stores that sell clothes for a dollar. And then the other thing that you can do is you can get um, curbside clothes. We're going to go into that in a minute. And thrift stores. So, and also churches have clothes for like a dollar. And you're going to find out about these because you're just going to keep your ears open and you're going to take advantage of it. Okay, so now I used to do this for years. I would buy three shirts and two pants and one pair of shoes per year. Yes, that's all I bought, and I got by just fine. So, let's say this happened to you. God forbid, I did hair, so I had to wash mine every time I wore them, but you could wear your clothes two days in a row if you don't heavily soil them, and then on the third day, you would wear your pants again and get a new blouse, because you have three blouses, and so then you would stagger them like that and like every six days you would be washing all of the clothes and you would hang them dry okay here is an example i bought i got this shirt curbside see this is a pretty nice shirt so what i did is i threw it in a pail and i put some detergent in there and then i threw it in the washer and i washed it and i'm air drying it and when i i go to the uh swap meet i will sell it so I have all these nice boxes, so when that's dry, I'll just neatly fold it, and I'll put it in one of these big boxes, and then I'll, you know, throw them in the garage. And um, when I was going to the swap meet the first time, you know, like, I was going to maximize my selling. So I would jam my little car full of the most stuff. I mean, I couldn't even see out. And so my neighbor, who would go to the swap meet, said, you know, 
I used to know this little old lady like you who sold hair every single week until she died. And she would just little pack little boxes, you know, trying to tell me in a nice way. And I thought, yeah, you're right. So the idea would be is don't be greedy. Just try to make a decent amount of money and go home. So I could blow in there at seven o'clock and blow out at about 10 o'clock. And depending on what I was selling, I would make, I mean, some, sometimes like, sometimes when I would sell really like just garbage, I would make like 30 bucks and then I would run over to 99 cent only and buy food on the way home. And you can get a lot of food at 99 cent only for uh, $30. And so this jewelry, this is from Walmart, so you know it was only a dollar in the first place. And so, except for this, I would sell like anything crystals, uh, $3 each, two for $5, but these are like worth maybe a quarter. And my bracelets, uh, two for $5. And my rings, these are good rings, but you know, $3 each. And then I have a nice watch that I could sell. So, okay, so now, so clothes are not really a problem. So now today, what I did is, this is 20 cans that I collected while I was walking. This is $1 and I could buy some food or some clothes. So what I will do is I will throw those bags in. I have these big industrial size trash bags so my neighbor said he made about $60. I don't know how often he went, but he would have about five of those big bags. But I know that bag is 20 cans, so that would be about a dollar. So I would need 60 of those. Okay, so now about the utilities. You're in your house, you're trying to reduce what you need. You could turn your utilities off at the breaker switch, except the refrigerator. And then uh, this uh, Prepper Princess was saying she uh, turned her uh, hot water heater breaker switch off and then just turns it on um, a half hour before taking a bath. And also you can just like heat one room with a little small heater and then um, I used to live next to people that lighted their house at night with um, Christmas lights. Okay, so now you want to get a stockpile of food as fast as you can. That way, like every little thing, you've got your, all you need is food, water, and a clean, dry place to sleep. So you got your shelter. And if anything goes wrong, you're not knocked out of, you know, having to take your last dollars and buy food. You can get by on your stockpile. So, and then for non-food items, you guys have been seeing me do this. I try to find, so I have my eye out constantly for 50% off on shampoo. Usually like the little lid is broken. It's not the best shampoo. Toothpaste, deodorant, dish soap, dish detergent. And then on toilet paper, um, what I'm doing is just, I have a little budget for non-foods and I, I buy those. You're never gonna find these days a deal on uh, toilet paper. Okay, now towels and washcloths. What you can do is wash your washcloths out and wring them out and hang them up every night and then just try to go as long like even a week with your towels it can be done and then another thing if you can create a co-op so you would trade off stuff with your um your friends also i knew women that had these groups and they bought stuff like buy one get one free and then the free one they would sell it was stuff they were going to get anyway, but they, they got good at getting the stuff free. I wanted to do that. Uh, you can sell that stuff at the swap meet. Okay, now I want to try this. Uh, survey Junkie, Survey Savvy, dump, uh, Opinion Square. So you take these survey, surveys and they pay you. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to have my son help me. 
And then there's dumpster diving. I found two baseball mitts in, in the dumpster and then basically, you know, the curbside. And, and in time, you will start getting stuff. Also, after the swamp meet, if people leave stuff, you're free to take that stuff. If either, I saw a lady buy, getting her uh, kids' school clothes there, but there's nothing to stop you from getting stuff for yourself there either. It can be anything, or it could be something you think you might be able to sell. Or sometimes when they're about to uh, close, you can make a deal to buy everything if you have the money. Okay, today I saw you several um, yard sales. I didn't stop because I was kind of busy today, but uh, those are good sources of getting stuff to sell on eBay. Um, so, you know, the best thing though is like when you first get started doing the can collecting $3 in one day, and then the curbside stuff to sell, working up to a swap meet or a flea market, working up to an online eBay store. I do the auction so I don't have to pay. Um, at this point, I, I have 200 posts per um, month. And what I have learned to do is only post stuff that I think is gonna sell. And so that way I'm not taking up a bunch of space and uh, junking my store up. Okay, so now, so today I found 21 cans, three hangers. Now I need hangers because I sell clothes. And I have a spare bedroom now and I will buy, um, I will buy um, closets, portable closets. And then I will go through the stuff periodically and I will sell that stuff at the swap meet that doesn't sell. And then I found the one curbside shirt and I could sell that shirt for a dollar and buy myself a Diet Coke. Okay, so now I told you guys about the rich guy. He was captured in war, he was thrown in a dungeon and he was sold into slavery. And as soon as he got out of the dungeon, he started doing the very same thing he had always done. He did his work, he came home, he ate some food, he washed his clothes, he washed himself, he read some books, and then he, he went to bed and he got up. And in time, guess what? He started to prosper. So uh, once we learn these habits of not needing anything, that's when you start accumulating and prospering. So one of the things I'm working on is coupons and coupon apps. I, I haven't done the coupon apps yet, but I want to uh, with Walmart. I think those are some of the best. So in order to make a little money, you would start out with um, cans. You could buy food with those cans. Curbside or free junk. Sell on the street, swap meet, and eBay. And reducing, always looking for ways, reducing, reducing, reducing what you need because you don't really need that much. In, Cal in California, here in San Diego, there's nothing to stop you from getting food. And you should if you need it too. And another thing is you can wash your clothes out, you know, in a bucket or you can wash yourself out in a bucket. Okay, you guys, please like, comment, and subscribe, and God bless you all.